A while back, we asked you guys on Twitter and Facebook for everybody's best Disney dining advice. My name is Joey, here for DFB, and today we're going to be talking about our top 10 Disney dining tips. The first tip is to make reservations. This one was mentioned dozens of times. Always do your best to make advanced dining reservations, no matter what, and try to make them as early as you can. We suggest that you plan ahead and try to make dining reservations for your high priority meals 180 days ahead of your visit to Disney World and 60 days ahead of your visit to Disneyland. To us, they're all high priority, so we just make all of our reservations as soon as we can. For those wondering if going to the parks during a traditionally slow season negates the need for advanced dining reservations, it doesn't. The popular restaurants are always popular, and Disney's slow seasons are getting shorter and shorter. Making reservations usually costs nothing and can save you lots of time during your trip. Tip number two is to do your research. We had a lot of people suggest that an important part of planning your Disney dining is doing a lot of research about the restaurants and dining options available. Check out restaurant reviews, learn from other Disney fans how they handled the dining plans for their vacation, read trip reports, and sift through the posts here and there on Disney Food Blog. Or you could subscribe to a high-quality YouTube channel dedicated to all things Disney dining. I'm just saying. The more you know, the better prepared you'll be to create a seamless dining strategy that'll be enjoyable to your whole family. One great tip here is to take stock of the types of eaters you're bringing with you. Make sure you know if you need to plan for fussy eaters, specific eating schedules, food allergies or intolerance, or just plain likes and dislikes. Then take that and try to translate it into your research. Tip number three is to coordinate dining with park hours and extra magic hours. This is another research tip, and it's a great way to make your time at the Disney theme parks go much more smoothly. Disney World posts their park hours on their website six months in advance, and Disneyland posts park hours in advance as well. Try to consider which parades, fireworks shows, and events you'd like to take part in. Then book your dining based on where you'll be in the parks and resorts at which times. Remember, if you're taking Disney transportation, getting from one resort to another might take some time, so be sure to allow for plenty of travel cushion. Tip number four is to eat at unpopular times. This one's just about the easiest to plan for and work into your schedule, and it's probably the one that will get you the most bang for your buck in terms of saving time and avoiding crowds. Most people out there eat at the prime hours, so 8 a.m. for breakfast, noon for lunch, 6 p.m. for dinner, or, you know, around there. So if you're eating breakfast at 10.30 a.m., lunch at 3 p.m., and dinner at 8 p.m., you'll be a lot more likely to get a reservation, and you're more likely to be able to eat without feeling rushed or crowded. Tip number five, be honest about food allergies and dietary restrictions. You see, the Disney theme parks are renowned for accommodating food allergies and dietary intolerance. No matter what restaurant you choose, it should be able to produce a delicious meal that won't exclude anyone. Also, many people with food restrictions will probably find that they have many more options at Disney parks and resorts than they have at most restaurants. If you know you'll be traveling with a difficult dietary restriction, contact Disney to create a dining strategy that works for you. They'll reach out to the chefs and restaurants to be sure you'll have creative, delicious food wherever you go. In fact, when guests have food allergies, a chef comes out to the table to discuss options with the guest, which I gotta say, that's pretty cool. If you'd like more information like references and resources for gluten-free diets, some of the best restaurants for gluten-free and vegetarian dining, or just tips for healthy eating around Disney, click the link at the top right of your screen to get the DFB guide for Walt Disney World Dining. Tip number six, be prepared for costs. The responses that we got here kind of seem to be all over the board, but the bottom line is you're paying a premium for that Disney magic. Disney restaurants are expensive, but you probably knew that already. If you're using the Disney dining plan, most of the time your cost is already budgeted into your vacation package. But if you're winging it in the parks, we like to budget at least $75 per adult per day for food. This allows us to enjoy a counter service meal along with a high-end table service meal each day. We usually don't spend that much, but we like to budget on the safe side just in case. So, tip number seven is to look for discounts. There are a lot of dining discounts available to those who are willing to seek them out. We got a resounding response for Tables in Wonderland, which is a fabulous program available to annual pass holders, Florida residents, and Disney Vacation Club members. And don't forget that there are often plenty of discounts available at restaurants around the Disney parks and resorts as well. You don't have to stay on property to eat. Tip number eight is to try the Disney dining plans. Now, the Disney World dining plans can save you plenty of cash in some circumstances, and they most certainly take all the guesswork out of budgeting for your dining. For those who want their Disney trip prepaid with no spending surprises, dining plans are definitely the way to go. For the past couple of years, Disney World has been offering free dining as an incentive during the autumn months, 
And in some cases, not all cases, but some cases, this can be a really great money saving option. So be sure to check out Disney's other vacation package and room only discount codes on offer to be sure that the dining plan will save you some serious money. And if all of this seems like a little bit of a headache, don't fret. We've got you covered with the DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining, where we break down the pros and cons of the dining plan, including variables like room discounts, free dining, and more. There's a reason we keep bringing this up. It's got, it's got a lot of information in there. Tip number nine, try some of the new or kind of under the radar restaurants. While we all love the classics, it's always fun to try new places, and you get to benefit from the great bonus that relatively unknown restaurants are, well, unknown. It's easier to get reservations, the restaurants won't be crowded, and you'll probably feel less rushed and more relaxed. And tip number 10 is to book late breakfasts to save on lunch and dinner costs. While it's true in some cases that you can book an early breakfast before the park opens, which can really help you get some great pictures, another great strategy is to book your breakfasts a little bit later and really fill up on breakfast so that you can save costs on lunch or just skip it entirely. With as hearty as a lot of Disney breakfasts are, this can be a great way not only to save a little bit of money, but also to free up a little more of your day to visit the attractions and the parks. But that's just about it for this one. We want to give a big thanks to everyone who contributed their thoughts and insights into what can make your Disney dining planning go smoothly and your Disney Disney trip a wonderful experience. If you have any other tips, tricks, or stories about planning your Disney dining, be sure to share those in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video or if it's helped with your planning at all, be sure to leave a like and definitely consider subscribing for more content like this. Once again, for DFB, my name's Joey, and we'll see you in the next video.